93.3 KGSR. Radio Austin. 93.3 KGSR Backstage, the Austin City Limits Music Festival. She is Halsey. Hello. Welcome. So you've seen this town in circus-like condition both oh, yes. times you've been here. Oh, yeah. Uh, what do you remember about South by Southwest? Um, let's see. I remember uh, it rained quite a bit. We did one show where it rained out and our, our, ear, our in-ear system stopped working. So we played the whole show deaf. Um, it was so punk rock. It was just raining. I couldn't hear myself. I was like, I hope this sounds good. Just like singing. I told the crowd. I was like, I can't hear me. So if I sound good, you guys let me know. And we just went for it. And it was, you know, super early on for me. Um, no one had any idea who I was. People still probably don't, but you know, even less than. Um, and it was a, it was a really incredible experience for me because I walked away from it with um, Twitter and South by naming me one of the most talked about artists at South by Southwest, which was. Um, I mean, there was artists like Miley Cyrus there, Ray Schremmerd, so, you know, that kind of buzz from a completely unknown artist, that was so motivating for me, and it's kind of given me the, the ambition that, you know, going out and playing these festivals, is, I'm, I'm cultivating a fan base, you know what I mean? Like, people are walking away from this with, with a new perspective and maybe hearing about me for the first time, which I love. The good news, bad news on the buzz front, and you've got a ridiculous amount of buzz, is that you want that, but it also comes with a certain amount of pressure and for expectations. Sure. Yeah, I mean, it was it was hard for me for a while. When we were leading up to the record, there were so many articles coming out that were like, oh, this girl, she's massive, she has all these Twitter followers, all this stuff, she's gonna be huge, she's gonna be huge, but no one said why. So it was all this, you know, and people don't like to be told what to like. So there's all this press coming out that's like, she's gonna be huge, she's gonna be huge, look at these numbers, look at these numbers, and everyone's going, okay, cool, but where's the music? So it was hard for me in that in-between space leading up to the record release because, you know, my fans were galvanized and, and they're incredible, I love them, but I couldn't put my money where my mouth is because I had no content. So putting out my record was so gratifying for me because it was like, all right, here it is. Like, don't listen to them, here's your reason to like me if you wish to, you know? Your guess as to why they're as engaged and evangelical as they are, fans, yeah. is what? Um, I, hopefully just a, a connection with me, a sense of, I, I think I carry myself with a sense of honesty and authenticity, I, I'd like to say. Um, I certainly don't censor or hinder myself from saying anything that I want to say, standing up for what I believe in. Um, my show is incredibly... I think unique for a female artist. Um, there's a lot of raw energy, a lot of sexual energy, but not like in a traditional way. Um, there's a lot of sexuality in the show. I think that is done in, in such a, an energetic way rather than in like a, a socially standard way, which I think a lot of people go to my show and walk away kind of confused as to why they think I'm hot, um, which is really funny uh, for me. But also just, you know, uh, I, I like to include them in everything. I go out of my way to meet them. You know, we don't do a paid meet and greet on this tour. I go out every night and I meet 300 kids. Every night I go out and meet 300 kids before I get back on my bus because this is what I do. This is what I love to do. And because asking people to pay to meet you yeah, is a weird concept to begin with. It's absolutely weird. And also that comes with a whole other level of expectation because then, you know, they pay. They have 60 seconds with me and I walk away feeling like, well, I wish I could give you more. And I don't like feeling like that, you know. So if I can, if I can um, feel like I'm giving them the most, you know, for their their time and their support, then that's that's so much better for me, I think. There's this whole movement now where it seems like pop, and it's pop, oh, yeah. is somehow punk rock. Absolutely. I think it's because pop is transitioning into, you know, pop in, 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 in itself is supposed to mean music that is popular. You know what I mean? And I think that... The, this new era, the, the millennials, as people are calling them, myself in, you know, included in that, in that group of people, we are looking for music that's more authentic. We're looking for music that you know, steps outside of the, the norm, that you know, experiments with production, that you know, crosses you know, genre barriers. And that's one thing that I think is so incredible is like, you know, when we started working New Americana at Alternative Radio, you know, urban radio said, we don't want this. Pop radio said, this is too vulgar. We don't want this. And alternative radio said, this is too pop. We don't want this. And I sat down saying, well, here we have a record that everyone's telling me doesn't fit in anywhere. What's more alternative than that? What's more alternative than being something that doesn't fit in? You know what I mean? Something that doesn't fit a, a specific genre. And that was my argument back to the radio stations. And they were all kind of like, uh, you know what? You're right. You're, you're actually right. Um, so they rolled with it. And I think that 
that type of also you know the the, the alternative fan base is, is such a new fan base than it used to be because you know you go to a rock show these days I saw Catfish in the Bottle Man a couple of days ago they have a record that's killing it at alternative radio bands like the 975 Arctic Monkeys um, that are true alternative acts their their crowds are full of young girls and it's because you know young girls are stepping outside I think of the box that is music they're supposed to be like that's the Justin Bieber's the One Directions who are awesome and I love but you know they're, they're stepping outside this box and I think looking for something that's maybe a bit more poetic and speaks to a more romanticized lifestyle which is that that the millennials live you know we live a romanticized lifestyle we have media everywhere we're always looking for you know the the fairy tale the the cinema story and music that brings that concept is appealing to them we're with Halsey backstage the Austin City Limits Music Festival the millennial thing yeah makes me feel old I'm and sorry <laughs> no 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 and I guess that's I mean looking at you or or you know researching you however many weeks ago you said something to the effect of the 1975 going to a show was one of the things that that sort of spurred this on where you're like oh I can do this and yeah. it was seeing the 1975 and to me the 1975 are as new as you are. Do, really? do you know what yeah. I mean? And so it's like the fact that the 1975 could be an influence well, is crazy. But at the same time, you just turned 21 a couple yeah. days ago. Mm -hmm. And there's a whole new yeah, for sure. thing happening, which I think is fascinating. Well, also, I think with music streaming, with like music being in such an open format in the sense that we people are discovering music on their own for the first time. Like people, with, with the existence of, of formats like Spotify and Pandora, where we're being presented music from a playlist perspective, where there's self-discovery, where kids can curate their own musical taste. They can go in and they can discover records on their own and they consu can consume them in full, you know, which means that we are constantly circulating through new music music and constantly discovering. I mean, I remember people, seeing people online saying about me, like, oh, Halsey's so overrated, before my record even came out. And I was like, what the hell? Because kids were talking about it on the internet. They were cycling through it. They were playlisting it. It was everywhere on Spotify, everywhere on Tumblr. And it was before my album even came out. And they're, they're saying, oh, Halsey's overrated. And I'm like, he hasn't even given me the chance to be overrated. I'll show you overrated. <laughs> All right, well, early backlash notwithstanding, Halsey here for the Austin City Limits Music Festival, playing both weekends on the Home Away stage. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. From backstage at the Austin City Limits Music Festival, we'll be back with more from backstage in just a little while with KGSR.